We sit. I'm on a lot. You can only be sideways. Senor Bocio, Senor Loco, how are you guys doing tonight? I'm good. Can you turn your screen sideways? And if you walk at the same time and set this all up. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How are you? Is that better? Hold on. I'm blocking the camera. There we go. Everything Everything is good. Can't complain. Live a life. Everything is everything. Back everything in the gym. Is back, back in the gym? Baby. We what? back. I'm going to the gym tomorrow 9 a.m., baby. What you talking wrist about? Feeling, wrist feeling still a little jacked up, but I can turn it and twist it. Okay. Okay. Is it time to is it time to start hooping again or no? You retired that for uh, sure now. No, no hooping for now. No hooping for now. But 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 the fact the games are gonna be crazy. Like the the there's gonna be another transformation on top of the transformation. I can see that man. You were doing your thing the other day. We had a couple meetings and uh I saw you were back on your uh on your diet, on your rice and tuna. Yes, sir. So so what's going on? We got forty five people on the live. What's going on, everybody? Appreciate y'all getting on. Diets. What's up, Joshua McLean? Jazz is in the house. What up, Jazz? Uh, the, got my new Tune 45 on the way. Start selling it in the shop. Hey, shout out to Andrew, new wholesaler. Yeah, my hair is long. All right, guys. So, so let's talk about what's what's going on. What's what's going on in the industry right now? What's the rundown? You want you want to go over the schedule first? Yeah, let's go. Go over the schedule. <clears throat> All right, so featured topic. Um, this might be a heavy one for Perez here, but we're going to go over owning a barbershop, opening one, what to expect once you're open, and what we personally, the three of us, could do def differently. Um, trending, we're going to talk about the beard unit, since everybody keeps reposting this beard unit. <laughs> and, uh, Jane Kamein, Jane Kamen. Just drop the dial ninety nine on you boys. Hey, uh, okay. Shout out. <laughs> hey man, and I don't, I don't really, I don't really see anything wrong with the with the beard unit, bro. You know, what I'm I, like I've been, I've been rocking one for you know. I just need like a little tiny piece, <laughs> like just, this area. Just, a, just a touch up. The partial, right, like right, right in here, and I'm good. All right, like what logo said, you need, a, you need a partial. <laughs> need a partial. We're gonna talk about our featured barber. And then we got two forty five updates, and then we'll end it with some Q and A. You know the feature barber logo? You are gonna like it? Yeah, I already got it. All right, all right. So, what are we gonna open up? Because I know we did a little bit backward last time. We wanted to start from uh, two forty five, and then work our way back, right? Yeah, let's do that. So, two forty five update is, ladies and gentlemen, we will be at every single premiere show now. We are gonna participate in some some way or fashion. Have a booth. At the Orlando, the Orlando premiere, not the Orlando premiere, but the premiere, the premiere hair show itself, Philadelphia, yeah. uh, Alabama, right? Bozzi, what's Birmingham, that Birmingham, Al yep. Bur Birmingham. Never been to Birmingham, Alabama. Never been to Alabama. Y'all been to Alabama? I got time. I got family out there. Okay, so we'll, local, we'll local. Where do you have family? Anytime we bring up a city, you got yeah. family there, bro. I don't even know what that is. Like, I'm saying international. Everybody's family, friends or family. What I'm just saying, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> Start calling you Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. I do got the sky mouse to prove it. Yo, Aaron said your beard look crispy, Perez. And what time is it over there? Wearing glasses, sunglasses. <laughs> I wear my sunglasses at night. Uh, it is currently what time is it? Nine thirty, nine thirty, nine thirty five, nine thirty something, whatever. Yeah. Hi. What's up, Valentina? Hey, sweetheart. Sorry, guys. So, all right, so. Um, so that's the update. We'll be at all the premieres. Um, we'll, the big shows will be the premieres pretty much and the Vegas Barber Expo. Um, but the premiere is a new thing. We'll have Jason Patrick. If you guys don't know who he is, you will know by the end of this live stream. Um, Gabin will be educating as well. And who knows what we might do um, outside of that. So, Loco, are, are you doing any more classes? You got anything lined up? Um, as far as just my by myself? No. Um, I do have some good news with Columbia, but we'll talk after the live stream. Okay, great to hear. Great to hear. Okay, cool. What else we got? Oh, so I'm out. Shears. You talking Shears? No, oh, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. All right, let's give that over. <clears throat> um, so so they asked about Texas Barber Expo. No Texas Barber Expo. I found out about it too too late. Um, Perez, tell local it doesn't matter where he has family. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he, 
Are we dropping the Clipper review? I just recorded my Babylon's Cordless Clipper review today. I just recorded that. Um, I'll be that, dropping uh, mine soon. Review. I'll be dropping my review soon on that. But as local can attest and Bajor can attest, I've been working on a huge project that's been taking a lot of my time. So with that being said, I still got to send project you the I'm sorry, by the way. I got I got to send you the instrumentals off the right when we got off the phone. I went into that to the meeting thing. Okay, but but uh, as soon as that's dropped. I will be dropping my uh, my uh, Babylon's Gold FXs. And yes, Lefty Shears will be coming. And uh, but I'm excited about that video you got dropping on um, Perez. It's gonna be dope. I don't I don't want to watch it yet because I want to watch it when everybody else does because it's gonna be epic. Appreciate that, bro. Hey Chris, you know what he said? Oh uh, Perez, you know what he boss just said yesterday. He said, yeah. I don't know how he convinced you to help him with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a big project, bro. It's a big project. Listen, it takes a village sometimes. It's 80%. <laughs> 80%. That's crazy. That's crazy. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so what do we got next on the agenda? We can, do, we can do the feature barber or we can do the trending topic, which is the, the beard units. What do you want to do? Let, let's, talk, let's talk Jason. Let's talk Jason. Let me pull him up real quick. Uh, who is Jason? R remember to change. What? <laughs> 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 like mid sentence I'm like, what? Uh, remember to uh, share your screen, Bosnia and local. We got to be quiet while you're sharing the screen, otherwise it shows us. No, I can I can set it to where it only shows the the screen being shared. Right, local. We talked about this last time, fellas. Back, anybody boys. watching this? If you just just keep watching. We're good. Okay, so boom. Now it's on me. Can you guys see it? Yep. All right. Ignore the picture with his shirt off. <laughs> um, this is Jason Patrick. He's actually, you know, 245 representer. Um, and uh, love the guy. Met him through uh, Jay, uh, just uh, Putman, Stephen Putman, Putman. and um, got to chop it, chop it up with him at the CT Barber Expo. He just kind of came, it just worked. The synergy was there. Um, but something special about Jason is he wins every barber battle he competes. He competes in. So he won, he won, a, a, you know, the Hair Wars Barber Battle. This is the CT Barber Expo ring. Ring. That thing. That's real diamonds and, and gold and all that good stuff right there. So he won the main event for the CT Barber Expo. Um, like these aren't, these aren't little competitions. These are huge. You know, it's not a mom and pop little battle that he's winning. This guy, yeah. like he shows up and he wins at yeah, major like, events. That's blurry. He did the styling. He did... The color, All the glitter, everything. But like that's 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 the type of stuff he does. So he'll actually be educating with at the um, at all the premieres, the uh, the Pennsylvania one or the Philadelphia one. Is it Philadelphia? So, yes, yes, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Okay, and he'll be at the Birmingham as well, educating on stage, teaching scissor work and fading and styling. So excited to have him part of the team. And um, again, there's no. Like, we don't just, like, there's no trial or nothing like that to be part of the team. It just happens, man. The synergy is just right. And this is the dopest photo. Look at this Bro, photo. That photo's fire, dog. Yeesh. Shit. You got Memo. You got you got Jorge. Zepeda. Uh, Zepeda. You, know, you got my. Memorial 360. So, Perez. Jason Patrick's egg get beat. And the rest wow. of, uh, and the rest of uh, Jeezy's. Cut, bro. All of in the, in the middle, in the middle of Times Square. What? In the middle of Times Square. That's a fire photo. That's oh. cool. So that's our guy, Jason Patrick. He is the featured barber this week. I know there's a little bit of uh, bias in that in the featured barber this week, but that's all right. Hey, real quick, can you guys check your phones? See what I wrote in there. Not to cut Do what? You. I'm sorry. Can you check your cell phone real quick and see the message I wrote you it's about the live stream? Okay. Yeah, he's yeah. We could do that. I I'm, mean, I'm cool with it. Let's just make an official announcement. Oh, official. Does that do it? No, no, no. We did. We did it. Let's have him on the show next week. All right. Ooh. Let's do that. Well, I'm on the I show like next it. week. So, right. Okay, cool. So next up is um, beard units. Can I pull up a photo? <laughs> you, you should pull up pull up the Instagram photo, bro. Can you, <laughs> can you guys share it to me? Yeah. Uh, you got a logo? I, I got to look. You look as well, though. I, I know. I did, I did see it on my Instagram. Like it was hilarious. 
Oh, you know what? I think Justine sent it to me. Shade but the shade room. The shade room. The shade room. Yep, you're right. I it literally just popped up in my DMs. <laughs> Bro, I'm still dead from that. <clears throat> hey, while you're looking that up, Perez, just real quick. Um, supposedly Ed Sheeran's getting sued a hundred million dollars. What? He he stole a Marvin Gaye song. Who sued song that? Hey, Marvin Gaye. Probably the label. Mm-hmm. Bro, how how many how many posts do do they do? I cannot. Oh, here it is. Yo, they didn't have his face. They had his face um, erased before. Yeah. No. No, the ones I've seen has his face been erased. The one, the one I saw was on Connect, and they had yeah. his face exposed. His face was not erased. Just his eyeballs. Yeah. All right. So let me share my screen. What do you, What do y'all think about this right here? So I I got about a hundred DMs because everybody said I need it. <laughs> Check this out, guys. Oh, the wow. Is it? Damn, boy. Look at that. You should have showed the, fir- the, the finished product first. Look, look, that looks real. That uh, looks the color enhancement messes it up. That looks It does. It looked better. It would have been better like this and then like actually groomed, like actually trimmed. Yeah. Without all the color. His hair looks fake pink. now with the color. But that, like, that would have looked real if they just shaped it. Yeah. It would like freeway. What, what is, I know one of these got to say, whose man is this? No, nah, none, <laughs> none of these say whose man, right? Whose man is this? Whose man is this? Nah, bro. That's like wildin' though, bro. That's like... Come here. Come here, hug and kiss. Is that too far? You guys... Watch out. Go around. What happened? Is that too far? That's too far. I'm going to put um, it out there. If there's a market for it, so... Let me say hi. <laughs> Say hi. Say hi, Bajay. Hi, Loco. What up, what up, baby? Uh, Stop by Ye says, I need that in my beard, the pride life. Right. That cut be looking There's certain good. people that would just, you know, they'll go the extra mile for that, man. All right, listen. Oh, yeah. I, I, I kind of feel like Loco on it. If there's a market and, and my customers are asking for it, I feel the same way I feel about color on it. I'm going to well, charge. I'm going to do it. There's a, I'm convinced there's a market for, for everything. It's just how big is that market? Yeah. Well, Correct. there's a lot of guys that are struggling beards. I'd say more than guys with good beards. Go ahead, raise your hand, logo. My beard's not struggling, bro. <laughs> it's just called the strong chin strap. Strong chin strap. Chin hey, strap went out in 98. Is the new wave. The right color, good color enhancement is is the new wave. Correct. But I will say we we, we got something for that coming up one um, soon. Two months. Hey, you got cash on you? I got cash, mama. <laughs> She sounds like my wife. Man. I already got head over the head as soon as I walked in the door. Cool. So what's next? What's next on the agenda, guys? Next on the agenda is opening a barbershop. Opening a barbershop, what to expect. Um, local, do you have your laptop in front of you? What, what was the rest of the, the... What to expect and then what would we do differently? Okay. Um, something Danny, Danny's been working on is actually – um a whole like curriculum on on table topping table topping um giving the software that we use to create our business plan our budget our um uh what's 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 it called what's it called when we project you know like 10 years oh uh, my god i know what you're talking the about pro, i can't think pro. business model no. no, 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 no. When you when he projects all ten years, the pro, it's pro- profit loss, profit loss, something. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh my god, I can't think of it. Hold on. Projection. The, the pro forma, the pro forma, something like that. There you go. Yeah. Forecast. Yeah. So the, it's essentially all it is is there's there's an actual corporate name for it, but the, essentially it's just the projections of of it and how we break it down, like like to the T. It's insane. So we're working on that. Um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, let's go ahead and, and talk about, you know, opening a shop. So the reason, excuse me, guys, I haven't eaten nothing all day. The reason I picked this as a topic is because we got branding coming up. And, yeah, we, we've been fortunate to hit seven shops. But, you know, I know there's probably a lot of people in the market that are, you know, have concerns or questions. And I feel that this was a perfect segue to open up into Q&A. Um, we opened up a shop. 
Perez, I kind of wanted you to touch on opening up a shop. Like, what's the first few things you might do um, since you kind of take, you know, lead on that? The first thing I would do when I'm when I'm opening a shop? Yeah. I mean, location is everything to me. Location is 1,000% everything to me. Um, location, and then obviously, I mean, it's it's so plug and play for us now, but I mean, what would I do if I was in somebody else's shoes? Tabletop everything. And by tabletopping, I mean... But hold on, but hold on. you said location. Give us some nuggets on location. Yeah. What, what, what are you location. looking for? I sound mm -hmm. like in one of those barber classes. Location. Nothing. Okay. My bad, bro. So so a big thing for me from where, me, from when, where me and Basio were before we opened our first shop, is I didn't want to be the reason there was traffic in the plaza. I wanted a legit anchor. I didn't want to be the anchor, if that makes sense. An anchor is something that brings traffic into the tr into the plaza, for, for those of you that uh, weren't aware. But I wanted a legit anchor, and I didn't want to be the reason people, you know, the reason the plaza was busy. So on our first location, for example, um, there's a ridiculously busy Chinese place right next to us, and on the left of us, there's a Hungry Howie's. What do those two places generate, local? Constant traffic and not stagnant traffic. It's in and out traffic. They're going in, they're picking up the food, they're leaving, they're going home. And what do they see when they pull into those places? They see the barbershop. The other important piece, at least for us, has been uh, LA Fitness. You know, 300 members a month, that, that generates a lot of traffic in, in, the, in the plaza. And not just 300 members, it's the right 300 members, right? Because they're people that care about what they look like. So when I say location, those are all <laughs> things that I look at with that. Like, it became an obsession for me. Bazio knows this. I would sit there. You know, this, remember, the, you know, the little counters that coaches use for a pitch count? Yeah. I would sit out in front of Utah before we opened it, and I would count how many cars would go into Hungry Howie's or the Chinese spot per hour. That's how obsessed I became with it. And it, it, stagnant traffic is no good. For example, people wanted us to open downtown. You remember that, right, Bazio? Yeah. That didn't make sense to me. Some people are like, oh, that's, that's money. You can charge more. It's stagnant traffic. People drive into downtown. They go to work, they park the car, they're there all day, and then they leave at seven. I don't want those same few hundred people. I want constant traffic. We've been in that location, what? We opened up our first shop. We're going on six years, right, Bazio? Yep. There are still people pulling into that plaza that move new into the area that are going to inevitably hit up Hungry Howie's or inevitably hit up the Chinese spot or inevitably end up at the gym or Winn-Dixie that are still finding out that we're there because of those other anchors. So, location. Anything you want to add, local? Um, as far as location goes, nah, that's <laughs> right on the head. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, revolving traffic. Um, you want to break down table topping? That's sure. it. That's all you got. You're not gonna add nothing to it. That's it for location. <laughs> nah, location. Baby. Anything at all? No, I'm. I'm saying I have nothing for location. I was talking more like table topping. You just want to skip the topic and move on. Just I'm saying. not skipping the topic. Like, I'm going to table topic. Table oh, topic. Like, table literally. Part of opening. That's opening a business. Here, here's another thing with location, guys. Um, let's say you find a location, you like it. Um, make sure, like, it's not just for me, it's not just the, the location, like the, the location in that location matters too, because you might you might get involved in a plaza that doesn't let you do anything. And then that location was with plazas that we loved in that specific location, where the landlord won't leave, won't won't even let you put up a sign that says I'm a bar I'm a barber shop on the side of the road. Um, so even within the location, like you talk to the to the landlord when you actually go and look at the site with the um, with the uh, real estate property agent, manager. Ask them, the property manager, ask some real questions that could affect you, like. If you can't put out a, if you're, if you love a location because right next to the, right next to the, the plaza is a really busy road, but you're not allowed to promote anything by that busy road, location is kind of worthless, <laughs> right? Um, and and go and talk to to LA Fitness. Let's say you like a plaza because the LA Fitness is dope. Go there, shake the hand with the manager, tell him you might be opening a barbershop in the same plaza, and see if he's the type of manager that'll be like that will cross promote. Your your business because sometimes you'll you'll get into a plaza where you love LA Fitnesses and the manager at the last um, plaza was awesome but this man's right here is a douchebag and he doesn't want anything to do with your barbershop so so I hope I hope that helps a little bit adding on to that I was trying to try to I, add on where actually, I will I will add something that 
it's kind of small, but something that I learned with Danny when we were picking up, um, when we were looking at spots out in uh, uh, West Shore or wherever we were looking. Um, the like how you said location within the location, as far as like where you are in the plaza, that does make a huge difference because that could affect your cost. For example, does the sun hit your uh, hit your location head on? Now you're gonna have to add tent. Now you're gonna have That's to. Don't teach you in school. Yeah. Now you have to add a tent, expensive tent, solar tent. You know? How and much? Then, how much would that tent run you? Man, tent can go anywhere from three hundred to eight hundred dollars. Like it's a I've huge. Seen it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That, that 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 thermal tent with all the all the crazy yeah. that stuff. Now you're getting twelve, $1, twelve fifty. Yeah, twelve well, fifty hundred bucks. Depends on how many windows you're covering. You know what I mean? But and then your AC. Then you you need five tons yeah. instead of three. Yeah. This oh, and your, and your AC's cost. running constantly. Yeah. This all affects cost, so definitely take take that into consideration, guys. Um, that also could affect do you have your waiting chairs outside versus inside. So, um, somebody asked about parking. Is parking important? Oh. Parking is absolutely Ooh. important. Once again, the first barber shop me and Bazio worked at. Well, we had six barbers, mm -hmm. six barbers, right, right, Bazio? We yeah. had uh, I think tw ten or twelve parking spots. It was useless. I mean, I I can't remember. I can't tell you how many. And Bazio can attest to it. How many people would pull in? We see them right in the window, pull in, pop their head in, like, yo, I, I got nowhere to park, and leave. Yeah. And just leave. I, you know I, how would <laughs> say, I would say this is where a lot of times when you're in an L.A. fitness plaza, um, there's going to be parking, right? Um, when you spend a decent amount of money on rent, typically, that's going to come with parking. And if it doesn't, typically, you'll end up in a plaza like Northdale, where the plaza decided, okay, we thought we had a lot of parking. The businesses are doing well in the plaza, um, and there's no parking, even with all this parking that we have. So because we do pay a premium for rent, it's a higher-end shopping center, um, it's not good enough for them to say, oh, sorry. Yeah. They ended up paying for valet. So now we got a valet right in front of the barbershop that parks your car for you for free. So that's, that's one of the perks of, of actually spending the money on a decent plaza in a good location. Mm -hmm. So I think we covered location enough for now. Yeah, I think so. so let's go. Uh, let's go. Up, let's go into tabletop. Hey, you guys said three, three to eight hundred dollars ain't that bad. Why are you acting cheap? So check this out. <laughs> so check this out. Just like a, a barber mat for a hundred bucks ain't that cheap. Yo, you have ten of them. There's a thousand dollars. And then we'll say, don't get the the twenty dollar garbage cans. Get yeah. the fifty dollar ones times ten. There's another five hundred bucks. Guys, when you have a $40,000 budget, that attitude can get you to $80,000 real quick. Hold on. Very this. quick. So this is a perfect segue into table topping right here. Because now we're going to talk about breaking down the nitty gritty of every little thing that matters within a shop. But let's talk about a $40,000 budget. Not everybody has $40,000 for their budget. I've seen people come at this with $20,000 trying to do a 10-chair shop, and I don't know how they do that. Because after, depending on how you word your contract or your uh, lease, come in day one, imagine if you owe rent day one. You just spent the whole 40K on your shop. You ain't got no money. Now you're coming out of pocket. And now you're- yeah, no, no barbers, no marketing budget, and no money for rent. I don't, I don't think that's being cheap. I think that's being smart. Absolutely, it's being smart. What, 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 I mean, I don't even know the numbers. I mean, you guys got your laptops out. What, what's the success and fail rate on a business in the first- in the first, 90% uh, of businesses fail in five years. In the first five years, yeah. with attitudes like that, it's not being cheap. It's being smart. It's the power of broke. It's it's be it's exactly. It's it's not necessarily being cheap. It's just understanding business and understanding that it, it if it if it can happen, it will, and you need to be prepared. So five years, right? Yeah. We just got past that threshold with our first shop. Yeah, with our first location. With our first shop. So the likelihood of our other six are high. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so in reference to table topping, or you want to talk about table topping or no? Yeah, that's what we're talking about already. We kind of, you know, we're breaking down. Table topping is that basically essentially what Bazu just said. The, the, you know, it's not the fifty dollar trash can. It's the fifty dollar trash can. You know, out to ten. It's not the thousand dollar chairs. It's buying ten of them, etc. It's it's literally breaking it down from if you can close your eyes and just envision getting out of your car and walking towards the shop. What's the first thing you see? You have your front door. What's on the door? What do you mean what's on the door? Well, you have to think about those things. You want your logo, your phone number, your services, 
Uh, what's after the front door, on top of the front door? Your sign. Do you want a sign? Do you need a sign? Should you have a sign? How, what kind of budget do you have for a sign? Your open sign, your closed sign, your your your, your doormat. I mean, all this a, stuff how adds up. A, how, much can a, how much did we pay for our last sign, the Brandon sign? How much was that sign? Ten thousand grand dollars. Ten thousand. There goes Hey, hey, if you, got, if you if you got twenty G's, there goes half your budget. Yo, sign. I'm being cheap, bro. It's just ten grand. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just ten grand. We're being cheap, though. <laughs> nah, he gets it now. If, if to be fair to him, he's in the comments. We've changed his mind. He gets it. Okay, then I apologize. I can't see the comments. I can't see the comments. <laughs> <so> my bad. <laughs> All right, but uh, but no, that's ta that, that's that's table topping. You literally you table top everything from the front door in. So after you walk in in the doormat, what's the first thing you have? A receptionist desk? Do you need a receptionist desk? Are you gonna have a receptionist? Magazine racks. How much is the magazine rack? How much of the magazine you put in there? Subscriptions. Your your station. When I when I was, you know, writing the stuff down for 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 the first shop, it was like, and, and obviously Danny taught me the term table topping and what it meant and how to do it. I was just like, oh, I, you know, I just need a, I just need a, a chair, a chair and a station. Well, what about the mirror? What about the frames that the license is going? What about neck strip dispensers? What about trash cans? What about mats? All this stuff seems minute, but it adds up. That's tabletop. And you literally, you tabletop everything from the inside out, from the front, back, from the top, bottom, left to right, every single thing that you need. Your barbershop license, everything, insurance. You tabletop it. The freaking the price list. The price list. <laughs> like, I forgot one. <laughs> yeah. Around. The bathroom, you know, every everything, everything. Do you want expensive toilet paper? Do you want cheap toilet paper? <laughs> you want a compressor? Hey, don't bring me that Scott. <laughs> hey, are you gonna have foam dispenser for, for soap or are you gonna have the Don with a liquid where, where it weighs easier? All that so, stuff. So put it so put it so pretty much if you decide that you're gonna go high end everything, you're looking at a hundred thousand dollar shop. If you're gonna be yeah. a middle of the ground, some high end things, you're gonna be at like 50, 40 grand. If you're gonna like really be cheap, frugal, the whole thing. You could probably do it for like 20, 25, but you're not gonna have any money left over for rainy days. What if it what if you fall behind and you can't pay rent? Not only that, but you guys gotta think about it. A good, a nice plaza, they want first and last month's rent. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. And if you're paying three grand rent, there goes six grand of your twenty thousand dollar budget. So you really only have fourteen grand to get this thing started. And we just paid ten grand for a sign. So now we only have ten thousand dollars to open a shop. That came after we signed the lease. Yeah. So Great so days, guys. Yeah, and that's something. Yeah, that's something we found out after we signed the lease was a requirement by the yeah. plaza. Yeah. And you're talking about a brand new <clears throat> shop. You haven't even spoken about marketing yet. How are you going to market the shop? How are you going to get the word out that you're even there? If you're going to put a sign up on the street of flags, it's going to cost you money to put it out there. If they allow you to do it, but you got to get a permit. Then that's going to cost you money as well. And like Loco said, depending how you structured your lease, all of this we, that we just said, and you don't even have a barber yet. Yeah. So thirty days from now, when they come up and they say, "Hey, you owe me three grand," where are you gonna get the three grand? In a brand new shop. Yep. Yep. So I mean, these are all like you guys can imagine all the things that we've learned opening six shops because I'm going to tell you right now, teach you all the things that you, you we're going to open up. We've opened up we're seven shops now and we've learned, uh, we've learned a lot. Every single shop we've opened. There's always been something new. Uh, Perez, talk about the one we were going to open about. We were going to open in, um, in Lando Lakes, like the Odessa area. The Odessa area. The Lando Lakes, uh, the one fifty four that we wanted to open. Yeah, that we were about to sign sign the letter of intent, bro. The Van Dyke, Van Dyke, I think, right? Bro, you are something else, bro. Oh, Van Dyke, Van Dyke, yeah, that's different. That's 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 oh, that's the other way. The the Van Dyke one on, in the LA Fitness Plaza. What the Publix one, bro? I'm about to throw something at you. The one we're gonna open by Sun Lake. Oh, Trinity. He's talking about Trinity. Trinity. Not Trinity. Hey, Trinity. The one by Sun Lake High School. The plaza that we were gonna open that's still vacant. Perez. In the public plaza, right down the street from there. Yes, the one that's still vacant. <laughs> <laughs> I think the point is it's still vacant, guys. It's Why is it vacant. still vacant? We were about to go with it. We wanted to do it, and then we found out what? 
it was dead. The plasma was dead. It was it wasn't worth it at all. No, it was gonna cost sixty grand to put electricity in it, and oh, you yes. to put the bill on us. Damn my it, man. I'm oh, trying to throw you hey. alley oop. You, you gave me the alley oop, but my mind. Once we move on from something, I moved on from it, bro. Hey, Basio. Chapter hey, close. Look at my screen real quick. Look at my screen. And by the way, right. by the way, my the, screen. No, forget your screen with the L. No, look listen, at my listen, screen. Listen, listen. Hold on, hold no, on. No, 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 no. Do it one more no, time. No, no, no. Uh, Hold up. Add my screen. <laughs> can, can y'all, can, can y'all, ho, ho, hold on a second. Time out. Because here, here's an all you right back Don't, to you guys. No one that's can another. Because I'm, I'm doing that's, this right now. I'm shooting L's at you. <laughs> back. <laughs> listen, listen. Real talk, honestly. And I know both, both, both of my colleagues here would agree. That's another lesson learned. No excuse for the fact that I forgot. But we have six shops. Six shops about to open number seven. And I cannot honestly remember how many spots have we looked at, Bazio, for oh, only man. opening six shops. Oh, yeah. Hundreds. Don't ever, shops. don't ever settle. That was the very first lesson that I learned when, when, when we set out to open up headlines is I got emotionally attached to plazas and I wanted to jump in. It was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And it was like, no, 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 rein it in, relax. Let's look at this contract. Let's see if it makes sense. Let's see if, it, let's see if, it, if it's going to work. We can't just jump into it. And I remember, Bozzy remembers, I, I remember hitting him up. I was like, man, I'm depressed. I didn't, I didn't get the spot because I was emotionally attached to it. New Tampa was our third, my third choice, third. I had two other spots ahead of it. And I hit him up. I didn't get the second spot, bro. I'm going to just go play basketball. I'm depressed. Leaving basketball, I saw the number for New Tampa. I called, and it just... It just fit. And I remember Bob just saying, there'll be 12 barbers in here one day. You remember that logo? Mm -hmm. And I'm painting the wall with eight stations. Like, dude, you're crazy. I'm trying to figure out how to feed eight families. Like, no, you're crazy. This will be a 12-man shop. And today, it's a 13-man shop. Woo! So, the, 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 the L's that I took is fine. But either one of these gentlemen can tell you here, we have taken entire days just looking at plazas. Somebody, Entire days. Somebody wrote the return of Christian L. Perez. Oh, man. It's all I, like good. That, it's all, I like that person. It, it, it's all good, but both of you guys can, can attest to that. Hey, I so mean, a couple, the three of us have jumped in a car and wasted a whole tank of gas looking at spots. Hey, so a couple interesting questions. Somebody said, um, would 30, 40K be decent for a high-end one-chair shop? This is what I would, I would tell you. I, this is the ordinary barber. I already know his business plan, and I get it. But what I would tell you is, number one, if you are a one man, if you are in a barbershop paying two fifty a week, let's say in rent, that's a thousand dollars a month. If you're gonna do a high end shop. You're gonna be paying at least three grand a month in Tampa. So you just tripled your booth rent to be the only person in your shop. Not only that, but the difference between a ten chair shop, the build out of a ten chair shop and a one chair shop is four grand, five grand. Right, None. because the the rent let's the rent's gonna be the same pretty much, right? It might be a few hundred dollars extra a month, or uh, even if it's a thousand dollars extra a month, the rent's gonna be is it gonna be a, a deal breaker, right? The sign the 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 sign is gonna be the same. That doesn't change, right? What you're really saving on the contractors, the the permits that you're gonna have to pull. The only expense you're really saving are let's care. say you want to we would do a six chair. Shop instead, six chairs at of you know, at six seven hundred bucks, a thousand bucks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're no, and, you, and you're talking. You're ta you said that, that they tripled their their rent, right? By going from a yeah. thousand to, to to three grand. And you're yeah. not even taking into account insurance, electricity, yeah. <laughs> your cams, cable. You're gonna have cable in there. You know what I mean? All that stuff. I mean, you went from three grand to forty five hundred. <clears throat> yep. You quadrupled and some your rent. Yeah, I would I would agree. Styles, Styles by Yates says, bro, better better off getting a salon loft. I would agree with that. Yeah. If if you want to be a one man um team, then then go for it. Do a salon loft. Yeah. Um uh, where were we going with this? What I mean the, the last thing on there was what would we do different? Yeah, but um there was some different. So you guys can get an idea of, and this is just starting the shop. We're not even talking about running the shop. What do you, that's the question. What do you expect once you're open? What to expect? Yeah, like, where are you going to get your barbers? 
are are your barbers going to be happy or are they going to constantly piss you off because they're always going to be complaining about something? Bro, somebody moved my trash can. <laughs> bro. Bro. Yeah, I'm bro. not lying, but that's a real complaint, bro. That is a real thing, bro. Bro. Bro, last time I came in, my clipper was on the right side of my station, not my <laughs> left. Dude. Seriously? Hey, I'm hey, hey, hey. Morning. Somebody, morning. somebody stole somebody stole my clipper. Two weeks upset. Somebody stole my clipper. Two weeks later. Never mind, man. I found it in my car. Yeah, like oh, bro. <laughs> and we got we got 65 barbers now. Times that by 65. And the thing is, that stuff stresses me. Like I'm literally thinking, like, where's this clipper at? Where's this at? <laughs> it don't stress me no more. And and the thing is that it doesn't stress me anymore to the point where guys are like Yo, Chris is a dude, a dick. Chris doesn't care. No, I just got more things to worry about. Like, complain to somebody else about that crap, bro. Like, your problems are not like I. If that's your problem, your biggest problem, you got the life, bro. Like, <laughs> and you need to stop like being so upset about everything. Oh, they be killing oh. me, bro. Somebody used all my razors, bro. Here's a pack of razors. Get out my here. <laughs> Here's ten bucks, bro. Go get some razors. Seriously. <laughs> Um, All right. uh, there was an interesting question here. Now I now I forgot. Uh, oh, somebody said. Do, um, so two questions. Um, do we know of any minority grants, and um, are we getting loans for this? Nope. No, we are not getting loans. And secondly, no. <laughs> um, I don't know of any now. I know when I was opening the first one, Buzz remembers. I pretty much. I I look, scoured look the internet. For, for I looked. I, th- th- listen, our 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 thing we like to say to to our managers and and our, our and our leaders and to ourselves all the time to keep ourselves in check is find the yes. I I I went to the end of the internet and back. I saw the end of the internet and I came back <laughs> and there was no answer. This is um, but this I, is when Lycos was still around. Yes. Or yes. Ask Jeeves. Yeah. Yes. No Google. Yeah. This is when no AOL, Google. AOL, AOL. Was it, was, it was, it was literally, yeah, it was, it was, it was. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, w- I would say what I really want to say, but we go keep it professional, <laughs> okay? <laughs> nah, this is only six years ago. This is <laughs> the iPhone two was out, or the iPhone three G was out at the time. The three, the three G was out. Nah, Danny had yeah. just got, Danny just got his iPhone four, bro. Yeah, the wow. one he just got rid of last week. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so keep going. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I should have thought, bro. Golly, you're killing me. So you went through, you went through everywhere. I went, yeah, I went, I went to the end of the internet and back. I checked, I checked. Try to get business bank, loans. Any business loan that I can get, any grant that I can get, anything, any assistance that I can get. And there was nothing for me, honestly. There was nothing for me. 23 at the time, 20, 24 year old, uh, Barber, with this is why this is why, and, and we can go into this at a later time or now. But this is why we stress the the commission thing. You know, twenty four year old with no verifiable income, uh, you know, decent credit, but who's gonna hand me what I needed at the time? Because I had a certain amount, but I needed X to get to to the end. I mean, I needed, I needed like additional twenty grand to finish what I needed to finish the build out. Who's gonna hand the twenty four year old twenty grand on on, on their signature with with no collateral? You I mean, just here's twenty grand. It wasn't gonna happen, so this is why we stress verifiable yeah, income, huh? Okay, never mind. You got keep going. This is why we stress verifiable income and 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 building your credit and you know building your your. Suppose you can you can get a house, you can get a loan if you need to. Because I was stuck. I was literally stuck. That's a tough. Anything looking? That's a toughie. See, I, at first I was thinking about it. I was like, man, I wonder if that's my, if that may have changed. I mean, you're talking six years later, barber industry is kind of going in a different uh, momentum. But well, from a, from a like, bank's perspective, well, from, from a, a bank's perspective, like, they might, they might look, no, no, it's not, it's not very. But what I'm saying is, from a bank's perspective, they might look at it different because the barber industry is booming. You mean, but from a, from a, you know, you need verifiable income stuff. It's that, that's that's no. not going to change. It's it's plays a bank. A bank gives you a loan. It's an automated system. It's not like it used to be where you sit down in the office and the guy in makes motion. Yeah. It's all it's all software. It's all an algorithm. Um, there's no way around it. And it's pretty much based on can you pay this loan back? And if you don't have verifiable income, 
How I'm not loaning you no money. You lost already, and and your credit gotta be decent, and you need s- some type of asset to be able to back what you're saying, right? Like when we go and we sign a lease, we gotta. In the beginning, we had to. <sighs> sorry. So we, we had to put our name behind it. They could go after us, right? Like we had to back it um, some way, somehow. So. Personal guarantee, man. Personal guarantee it, right? Um, so that's that's base, That's basically it. And the thing is that barbers think too short term. We don't think long term. And we, we want to, we you know, we want to take every single dime, try to avoid paying taxes. But you're shooting yourself in the foot. Now, if Perez had verifiable income, and back then, if he knew what he knew now, what he knew, if, uh, if he knew what he knew now back then, so he could have easily walked in and got that loan, right? This is why we stress these things. It's not because, you know, a lot of people don't agree with what we talk about, you know, the commission and the, the verifiable income and stuff like that, but it's because we've lived it, right? We've lived it and we're trying to help <laughs> you avoid those hurdles or avoid those lessons that we've learned. Uh we like to say, Bajir, you couldn't get an education like this at Harvard. You know what I'm saying? At Harvard Business School, you couldn't get an education like this because we're living it, we're breathing it. It hurts. We feel it. We make a mistake. We learn from it. We move on. And we're trying to give you guys that. So somebody wants to know how much profit every month. So let's let's do this. Let's do this. So check this out. This is why your shop owner has no motivation to promote you, has no motivation to get a billboard to get to 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 get a sign guy to do ma- marketing campaigns, all of which will help you make more money as the stylist in the chair or, or or the barber behind the chair, right? The reason why is because I'm gonna make what I make no matter what if it's a booth rent business model. So let's break it down this way, okay? You have ten chairs, they're all full. Let's say to make make it simple, everyone's paying two hundred bucks a week. That's what two thousand dollars a week. Right, yep. that's yep. that's eight grand a month. dollars a month on average, right? Um, not on average, but basically, just to make it simple. Okay, I know there's some months with five weeks, whatever. Let's just make it simple. Let's say it's eight thousand. That is the revenues, not the profit. Let's say your your rent is three grand. Now you're no, only no, down let, to five. Let's not say. Let's say that it's three grand, probably four, because if you have a ten man shop, it means that you're in a pretty big, you know, pretty pretty decent plaza. That's not going to be no twenty five hundred dollars. Let's say four grand. Okay. Well, the reason why I say three is because I'm I'm speaking for the average market. Okay. Because, so three. Yeah, I go to Tennessee and freaking rents fifteen hundred bucks out there, right? That's crazy. Um, so let's say it's three grand. You you got five grand left. Okay. But wait a second. Electricity is how much? Four hundred bucks, Perez. Four or five hundred bucks on average during the summer. It can get up into five. Yeah, cable, cable, and and Internet. for business, one hundred eighty bucks, right? Um, you, you got, you got insurance, you got to pay. We're already at six grand in. And that means we've only made $2,000, $2,000 for the whole month. For the month? The whole month. month. I put up, I just put up 40 grand to make two grand a month. Wait a second. What's going on here? Hold on. (laughs) Like, and wait, my barbers are complaining. They want me to, to spend more money on marketing. Somebody moved their trash can. Anything, no matter what. Somebody used my razors. Somebody moved the trash can. Okay. So so I got to put a thousand dollars a month extra to so to 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 market my barbers who are complaining about their trash can being missing or their their clipper being moved to the left when it was on the right when they left, right? Like so oh, now I'm oh, only making how much? A grand. Oh, but- Oh, and by the way, you're gonna put you're gonna put a grand in our marketing, and if that barber makes more money, how much do we share in that? No, nothing. Nothing. So what, what, do what, what do you mean nothing? What do you what do you mean nothing? But I, I marketed you so you can make more money. No, bro. No. I get nothing. No. So so. Wow. So so wait a second. I'm doing all this. I'm I'm a slave to my business. I'm making sure everybody's happy. I'm doing with dealing with all these attitudes. I'm still dealing with my customers. I'm not getting to leave after I work because I got to clean up the shop. Wait a second. We got to hire a cleaning lady. I don't have time for this no more. That's another $600 a month. I'm not making no money, bro. Like, you don't start a business to make make that type of money. Go through all the things you got to go through to build the business, all the risk you're doing to build the business. You got your name, a personal guarantee behind it. 
this is what I mean by so 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 a business owner, a barbershop owner has no motivation to spend that extra money to do marketing because there's nothing in it for him. Right? And the barbers, they don't care if the shop owner's doing better or not, because they all they just think that that man's balling because he got his own shop. Of course. Right? No, and, and the thing is, you, think, you said there's nothing in it for him. And a lot of people will perceive that as greed, and it's simply just not the case. <laughs> you Like you, you said it a couple sentences ago, you don't open a business to not make money. It's that simple. Yeah. It's that black and white. That simple. You do not open a business to break even in most, or not make money. In most cases, you could probably make more money as just an individual barber than being in a toxic environment as a shop owner. Absolutely. I- I mean, where if it was commission, wait, that's another ball game. I could break even for the first year because I'm hoping there's going to be a return on my investment. My barber's going to be making more money, therefore I'll be making more money, right? So there's it's it's a little different. So everybody's trying to hold on to their little thousand dollars a week, paying their little two hundred dollars um, a week in booth rent, coming home with eight hundred bucks. Now nah, I want you to make six figures. I want you to make six figures. Let's 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 yo let's. And, that, let's get and that's billboards. a legitimate that's a let's, legitimate statement because let's get radio. Rise, I rise. We both rise. Yeah, let's get radio commercials. Like, let's raise our prices. Like, let's let's do this together. I'm literally invested into your success, one thousand okay, so percent. The Clipper doctor says I'm opening my own shop in about two months. I'm currently in a bar in barber school, and I graduate next month. I have my my con my contents ready. And location where I have signed a lease. I'm not. I'm not seeing where your question is. Oh, my question is: How do you effectively choose your barbers? Also, how do you build clientele? I've owned my own business before, so my education on ownership is intact. But I know it's different. So, <clears throat> first, first and foremost, never do discounts. We've done uh, like big uh, community events or community, uh, you know. A grand opening type thing and just give haircuts away for free. Get your name out there. Get the word out there. In reference to barbers, uh, one of the mistakes we made in the beginning is we tried to find the best barbers. That's not what you want. You want to look for character. You want to look for the person. You can teach somebody and elevate somebody and, and groom them into cutting hair. You can't teach somebody to be a good person. Period. We learned, I hit my head up against that wall over and over again, but he's a good barber. But it doesn't it doesn't matter because if he's not a good person, you're not going to change that. So I would rather have an empty chair than to have a, somebody with bad character or somebody toxic. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, guys. I didn't mean to. No. Yeah, sure. I mean, like the I'll touch on the discount thing again. Um, You got to figure out what kind of barbershop you want to be. Like, I wouldn't say never discount, never discounts, because if you want to be a discount shop, then be that discount shop. If you want to do if you want to promote, if you're going to keep discounts forever. And do eight, ten dollars, fifteen dollars, whatever it may be, haircuts all the time, and you don't mind it, do your thing. But for us, not every customer is going to be your customer. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm okay with that. I want the guys who aren't chasing the next discount, because honestly, the problem is that once you get those, once you have a discount barbershop business model, Great Clips opens up next to you. Now it's a battle of discounts. Now. They got a hot air balloon saying $8 haircuts. Your clients aren't loyal to you or to your business or to loyal the price. They're loyal to that, that discount, to that price. I'm sorry, but there's, there's, there's no stability in that business model. So it's, you know, I would definitely go the other route and say, hey, we are the professional twist. We are, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're real barbers. We're going to use the razor on you. Like that type of business model um, as opposed to the other one. And like like Perez was saying, like when you're looking for guys in the beginning, the first shop, you don't have a brand. You don't have a, a name for yourself. It's going to be tough, man. Um, but you, I would say look at it the long term. Look at it in a long term way because we've gone through a little bit of both, right, Perez? Like we've, we've taken a chance on somebody and just say, you know what, something's off about him, but maybe he'll just buy into our culture. Go ahead, local. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I mean, yeah, that, that's a legitimate statement. We were concerned. Like, I don't know how he's gonna mix with Carlos. This ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and some with some guys it worked, but most of them it didn't work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but 
like now it's not a problem. Now everybody's like headlines. It's a brand in Tampa. Everybody wants to work at headlines. It's it's easier for us to find barbers now. We don't look for them. They they kind of come to us, right? Um, but I would say, um, I would say, for for me, if I could do it all over again, I would go to schools, teach free classes, and see who buys into my energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, see who will will like. I'm sh- local. I'm sure a bunch of people. After one of your free classes at a barber school, we're like, bro, you put it out there. Hey, and anyone here is more than welcome to shadow me. Most won't come and shadow, even if it's for free. Most won't do it. But the ones who do, oh. those are your potential guys. You invest into them, and there's your next barber. To Hold a honest, chair for them. To be honest, everybody that's hired at Brandon was one of those guys. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I would. So his next question was, should I start out offering commission or straight booth rent? What I would do in that case, look, especially since you don't have a brand like now, not nah, commission. Everybody's commission because, you know, you're going to come. If we're going to hire you, we know you're going to make money. OK, but back then when we were trying to build it, it would be booth rent because the guy who's coming in is taking a risk, too. He doesn't know. If, if they're going to be successful at your shop, just like you don't know if they're going to be successful at your shop. So they're taking a risk risk with you. I would grandfather in the first couple guys, we, the first few guys. We right? even had the term. We, we would use the term uh, um, found, finding founding barbers. Remember the first yeah, three guys. in, those, barbers, are found, yeah. those are our founding guys because they took they took just as much of risk as we did. And they, they took the leap with us. Yeah, not just as much, but they did. They did yeah, take you, know, you know what I mean? I didn't mean just as much yeah. like monetarily. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, and they should be awarded for that. And those are the yeah. founding guys. Those are the those are gonna end up being your managers, your guys, your leaders. Those are gonna be, end up being the guys who help you on your next location. Your Chris Locos, yeah. and That's end true. up being your business partners. And and those are the those are the guys that you really invest in. But but um, after that, once it's built, is it fair that the new guy comes in? And gets booth rent just like the founding guys, the guys who took all the risk. No, I don't think right? so. We built the now we we got our founding barbers. They're they're grandfathered in. We have built this little brand. We know the next guy coming in is gonna make money. He didn't take no risk, nothing like that. Well, he knows he's gonna make money coming in. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, he should be at commission. So yeah, yeah absolutely. <clears throat> and that's how you grow that. And here's the thing: the new guys coming in that are on commission. I mean, you're gonna be making some money off of them. So I would take, I would take a bunch of that money instead of putting it in your pocket. I take a bunch of that money and and put it right bit back into that person, whether it be continued education, or or a marketing campaign for them. Show them that you care about their success because his success is your success, and invest in that person. I I totally agree. So, shoot, like how we do with the football teams. Just take a few of those guys out to the football teams and just say, hey, guys, you guys are going to treat the team and make it seem like it, they paid for local, it. All. Local, this is a good question for you. Um, somebody said, I heard you guys talking about discounts, like $10, $12 haircuts. What about active duty and senior citizen discounts? You're a veteran, um, local, so you'd be perfect to answer this. Um, I still, in our particular business model, I still say no. <clears throat> And um, it's one of those things like not every place you go as a veteran, not every place you go, you know, gives military discounts. So for the most, for the majority, the masses, uh, most veterans don't even, they're not offended by it. The people that I think are a little bit offended by not getting a discount are usually like seniors, guys that are like 80 years old, you know, but veterans don't really care. They, they're more so like, hey, is my hair not going to look like I just came off a of base? Is it going to look right? Their veterans are more into their look, I think, than um, most people are. I think I think what's interesting to me, what I found is the guys who don't care about their hair and just want the cheaper haircut, they get don't the haircut on base. In. Yeah, they don't even walk in. The, the, yeah, they get the haircut on base. The guys, the guys who want a nice haircut, they're like, bro, I'll pay you whatever. Like, please just cut. Like, I can't get my haircut at the base no more. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, so. You know, they just appreciate it. Um, as far as the older guys, man, like, I'll be honest with you, like, we we're usually in the higher higher end areas. The older guys are coming coming to our shop in Maybacks. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, I'm sorry, but 
we got to do that comes every Saturday and, and an R8. I'm like, okay. Yeah, like wow. you want a hot towel shave. You want a scissor cut all the way around. You want a discount too. We're not the shop for you, but there are a bunch of barbershops. As a matter of fact, Great Clips has about 1,500 locations. They'll do your hair for eight months. <laughs> We actually yeah, had a so guy. Like, about it. We actually had. A, we actually like had, I said, had, not every customer is our customer. Yeah. We actually had a senior come in, sit down with G, got a haircut, loved it, was shocked by the price. He's like, "Oh, this is crazy! No, no way! It's too expensive." Left. Two weeks later, went to a budget cut place, and then came back for Guardia to fix it. Like, I'm good, bro. I don't need the discount. Just I'm gonna keep coming to you. <laughs> yep. Hey man, I remember that sign we used to have that said we fix eight dollar haircuts. That was my favorite marketing tool. Ever. So, so Clipper Doctor said, I plan on offering first business cards on me. Is that a good idea? I'm a detective here in Pine Bluff. I originally planned on police officer discounts, but now I'm thinking against. So the police officer discount, I wouldn't do. Um, I would give them a free haircut the first time. Yeah, yeah. I would do that. If you want to give show love to first responders, um, veterans, all that good stuff, give them a free haircut. Like that's appreciation enough. They won't. They won't expect a free haircut the next time. But if you really want to show love, shoot, sure, give them a free haircut. I've done. Give I've done it. And I've done. And I've, and I've done it randomly, not even marketing it. Just, oh, you're in the military. Oh, that's what's up. Or you're your officer. All right, cool. No, you don't wait. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Don't worry about it. Give me next time. Yeah, but th- and, that, and that has more of an impact. The person, <clears throat> they're gonna appreciate that more because they're not gonna feel like oh, it's just a marketing scheme to get more more people in. They're gonna appreciate that more. And they're gonna recommend your shop to all their all the guys on base, and they're not gonna be like, "Yo, go to the shop; it's a free haircut." They're not gonna do that. They don't expect you to cut everybody's hair for free. But those type of gestures are, are dope, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely, they're genuine. Yeah. Oh man, ten thirty. Got any more Q and A on there? <laughs> so, guys, any more questions? Because this is it, man. This is we're at ten thirty. Yeah, we so I talk. can't see. I can't see. Is it Liddy? How many people we got here? Um, yeah. So there's there's si- sixty people on. Okay. Okay. Ooh. The Clipper That's doctor said never thought about that way. Dope. Yeah, guys. I mean, this is what we do, man. We've done this a bunch of times over and over again. So, um, you know, we don't just cut hair, man. We also we've also learned a lot throughout the years. Actually, trying to be barber business people too. At the same speaking time. Of, speaking about discounts, if you're not gonna do discounts, um. Please, please, please stay true to your prices, no matter what. Um, <coughs> there's been several times in the shops I've opened with headlines um, that people will come in th- those first few days after opening the shop, and they're like, "Whoa, it's twenty dollars for a cut." Oh, they're they're charging fifteen right down the road. Do not drop your prices to fifteen dollars just to get that client. You will hurt yourself. Yeah, um, and that's kind of tough when you're sitting down and you're not cutting hair. Yeah, just to touch on that, man. Like I remember we did Northdale. Some of the guys. They didn't believe. Like we were trying to charge twenty bucks for a haircut. Yeah. No, eighteen dollars for a haircut. Yeah. And they were so scared to ask for eighteen dollars when the guys down the road were at fifteen. Yeah. And we got one complaint. Like this is the, the crazy part. Now that I look back at it, we went through a whole week, probably cut a, a hundred people, over a hundred people, um, in that week. One person complained about the haircut. Oh man, I don't know about this man. <laughs> Really? Like, guys, trust the process. I, Again, not every customer is your customer. I got a question for you, Bazio. That barbershop down the street that was charging 15 what are they charging now? 15 They raised. After When we raised, they raised. I can't uh-huh. hear you now. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Yeah, they raised. Influence the community, man. Little by little, everybody got raised. It doesn't matter. What, what, every single barbershop we own today, they all charge twenty now, and we were scared a few years back to charge eighteen. I remember that. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, the, the fifteen to eighteen jump was like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, yeah. It was funny because I, I, when I first wanted to work at Headlines, it was fifteen, and I was charging twelve in Zephyr Hills, and I was like, man, I want. <laughs> I want to work at headlines so much. They charged 15. I came back from Cali and it was 18. I was like, hell yeah. And then like two months later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So awesome, man. Enjoyed the live stream. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Yeah. Um, Brent, um, me along with these two guys right here, we own seven locations. He asked me if I own my own shop. 
We're on, we're on seven locations in Tampa Bay area, me along with these two uh, cool guys here. So can you do a quick summary on the process of commission? Um, not right now, man. It's 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 we got to wrap it up. We're, we're over our time. But guys, if you're interested in um, in the the, um, the curriculum for opening a barbershop, running the barbershop, doing your business plan, pretty much pretty much every all the information you need to know. Like if I could go to college for opening a barbershop, this is the content I would want. If that's something you're interested in. Email us. Email us at bossio at two forty five dot com. I'd love to start building a little bit of um, a waiting list for for that curriculum once we drop it for that for that stuff. So negotiating the lease, yeah. everything's in there, right? Yeah. If you got a forty thousand dollars, if you got a ten thousand dollars budget to open up a barbershop, this will work for you, and you should be willing to invest in um, setting this up in in this class because it could save you thousands. No kidding, tens of thousands it could save you. Absolutely. Remember, we almost ran into a mistake where we we're gonna pay sixty grand to oh, put electricity God. into a shop. <laughs> so, and we've know we know barbers who ran into an issue where they got shut down, and it took them two years to finally get the the shop back open. Yes. So, all right, fellas. Anything else you guys want to add before we we uh we stop the live? Nah. Do you ha you have some business stuff on on the academy as well, right? Yeah, we got business stuff. More on the personal side. So um, I'm going to separate the two because not every barber should be a businessman. Not every barber should open up a barbershop. Mm -hmm. So currently the, the the online academy focuses more on the individual barber. And the business side of it obviously is um, self-marketing, uh, you know, opening up your own EIN, your own um, LLC, um, how to do your taxes on a personal basis, not on a business side. Um, where the other other side of it will be more personal. Uh, yeah. Right. So next week, uh, Jason Patrick. I guess they they want to hear they want to hear about uh, the the breakdown of commission, and we can touch on YouTube merch. Okay. So so next week we'll we'll talk about commission. We'll talk about Jason. Uh, we'll have Jason Patrick on, and yep. we'll talk YouTube merch next week. So and make sure you guys share this live stream if you guys found some found it informative and. Uh, yeah, it'll actually be dope because he's actually part of a commission established. Uh, yes, he is. So it'll be he dope. He is. Yeah, that would be dope. Legit. Go hand in hand with the conversation. Let's do it. All right. So, uh, All right. Quick question before y'all go: Does Danny know how to cut hair? As, <laughs> yeah, uh, he, as he, he does designs. He can do a mean butterfly. Does he know how to cut hair as much as y'all know the business side of barbering? I would say Danny knows more of the business, more of business. Not the business side of barbering, but he knows a lot about corporate level things. Um, Danny was an executive uh, before the barber thing. Um, I'll let you answer the rest of that, Perez, since you wanted to talk. No, he's just uh, – if, if we're talking the equivalent of what we know in here, does he know business? Yes, if that, if that was the way the question was worded. He absolutely knows a lot about business. We know a lot about business as well, but – at least for me, uh, he's been, you know, kind of a mentor when it came he's to the business side. All of us. Definitely, he mentored all of us. I mean, the, the when guy, it comes to you barbering, know. you know, here's the thing about about Danny that, you know, he 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 knows where to put his input and when it to comes stop. to barbering trends and things that have to do with cutting hair and barbering. You know, he learns from us just as much as we learn from him. So, <clears throat> we that's that's what makes our that's what makes us so successful. We just have synergy. Yeah. All of us together, so it's crazy. As much as we want to learn business from him, you could actually see him growing. And one, one of the learn barbering, barbering <laughs> must. Does he pick up clippers to answer your question? No, but this man will tell you what you know. What is a mid fade or high fade? A blow. Hey, he knows he, he, does all, he does all of that. But hey, logo. When you first met Daddy, did you ever think he'd have a beard shaped up with a cobra? Nah, I did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Undercut. He went to Great Clips, and he at the time he owned three barbershops. Four barbershops. You go to Great Clips. Like I just want to get in and out. I don't need all that stuff. What is that? How do you do that? Like owning an ice cream. Oh, Chris left. Chris left. Oh man. All right, guys. All right. Yes, Go go check out my transformation video. Go check it out. Like it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Later. Later.